All right, so welcome everybody to the Imperial Teaching and Learning Call for Wednesday, September 21st. And um, I've pasted the link to the Etherpad in the chat. If you'd like to go ahead and sign in, please do. Um, today we're going to be doing a Jira Palooza, so we'll be going over any Jiras that, um, that you would like to discuss. And if, if there aren't any that are suggested by folks on the call, then we can just kind of do a filter to find some that look interesting. Um, <clears throat> but first, we'll start off with a couple of announcements. So um, Charles Bristow has been one of our teaching and learning facilitators for quite some time now. And he's gonna be stepping down from that role, although he will still be attending from time to time. Um, but I'd like to say thank you to Charles for doing such a great job helping us um, keep these teaching and learning calls going. And um, you know, thanks very much and, and we'll miss you in this role, but hopefully we'll still see you on the calls. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, the other announcement is about the Sakai Virtual Conference. So um, that is coming up on uh, November 15th and 16th. We're doing a two day thing because we're doing some post uh, conference workshops on Wednesday. Uh, so the 15th is, is kind of the traditional style of, of Sakai Virtual Conference. It's a full day of Sakai um, presentations, lightning talks, um, that sort of thing. And then on the 16th, we have a couple of post-conference workshops. One is on Zerte and the other is on Materia. And um, some of you who may have been on the call um, when they on Inga did a, a Zerte demo for teaching and learning, um, I know there was a lot of interest. So um, that's gonna be a great workshop. And the Materia one also is, it's a similar type of thing where it's a content creation type of software, except Materia is more uh, widgets that you can plug right into your course. Both tools work with Sakai um, using LTI, so you can send grades to the gradebook. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about e either of those, please um, register for the virtual conference and you'll uh, get lots more info on those. Um, we do have also a, um, a birds of a feather topic poll that I, we we're kind of shopping around to the different working groups. So um, we wanted to make some time in the agenda for some birds of a feather discussions to give people a chance to talk about certain things. But, um, but we wanted to figure out which topics were the most popular for those. So um, if you go to the link there in the etherpad, you'll see a um, spreadsheet and this is just kind of an informal poll. This list of, of topic ideas came from the marketing group. That, that was the first working group we went to. And we just sort of had kind of an open-ended form to suggest topics for the birds of the feathers. Um, so these are the ones that, that uh, came out of that discussion. And then it, we, um, I took it to the core call yesterday and asked folks on the core call to just make a column and put a one next to their three top topics. So we don't want to necessarily put them in order. I'm just kind of trying to test for popularity um, to see which topics are the most popular. But if there is something that, um, that you would like to see as a topic that's not already in here, uh, feel free to, um, to add in this, um, you know, anything uh, row 18 and down, you can grab a row and, and put in an additional topic if there's something else that uh, doesn't already appear there. So again, feel free to go ahead and add. There's a subtotal column here because um, Josh was curious to see what the totals were <laughs> um, <clears throat> after the core call. So I'll just insert a couple columns so that people have space to, uh, to add some stuff. Wilma? Yes, go ahead. I was realizing his total column uh, includes mm -hmm. all cells to the left. So you're adding us to the total for core team. We need to be to the right of core team or we need to paste values for that column. Oh, yeah, you are right. Let me delete these and we'll just hide this one for now because it's a little distracting to have a totals column showing. So let me hide that. All right. So 
So go ahead and, and just grab any of the other columns in there. And again, it's very informal. So, you know, you could change your mind, switch your votes or whatever, but <clears throat> we just wanted to get an idea of what um, discussions would be popular among folks. So I'll give you a minute or two to do that. So far, Adam Zilla one. Christina, I think you already voted, right? You were on a court call. Christina, this isn't Chicago. <laughs> Vote early, vote often, yep. All right, well, I'll let, um, oh, looks like Didi just joined, joined us. Didi, I think, also voted on the core call. So um, feel free to, to swap your votes if you have a change of heart or if you thought of a new topic. Um, but uh, I'm going to take this to the UX group later this afternoon and, um, and see if there's any folks there who weren't already on one of the other calls that gave their input. And then um, I'll put it out to just the, the email list to see if anybody else would like to um, voice their opinion. And then we'll tally that up and that'll help us determine which of these topics will be available for Birds of the Feather um, discussion sessions. So thank you guys for your input. Um, and we'll, we'll tally this up, like I said, with the other um, votes later. So I'm not gonna wait for everybody to to chime in today but um but thanks for your input and we'll be adding those up with the other stuff um the other thing i wanted to mention about the virtual conference is the call for proposals is open so there's a link here direct to the submission form the um the website has not yet been um, made live so uh hopefully that will will come live in the next day or two um I put in a request to have the, re uh, the URL redirect to this year's site. So if you go there now, I think last year's site, site is still available. But um, the, the one for um, 2022 is um, ready to go live and should be available shortly. But in the meantime, if anybody wants to submit a proposal right away, um, you can go direct to the form and uh, submit. And what we're doing is we're um, soliciting for lightning talks. So we're going to uh, have quite a few lightning talks um, throughout the program. Those uh, We did that last year and it went over really well. I to like that format. It was kind of fast paced, kept things moving. Um, and also it was kind of low stakes in terms of pre you know prepping for the presentation because it's only a short amount of time that you have to um, prepare for. So uh, if you have something that you'd like to showcase, maybe a course you want to show off or, um, you know, a feature that you really like that you want to talk about, um, you know, anything is up for grabs for uh, for the lightning talks. And uh, we, we really encourage you and, um, and folks at your institution, maybe faculty, encourage them as well to submit lightning talks. And again, those can be a uh, course showcase type lightning talks as well as, as something more like on a specific, you know, tool or, or item. So um, they don't have to be um, very technical. They can be, but they don't have to be. So hopefully you guys will um, submit lots of lightning talks uh, so we can have a great agenda again this year. Well, um, I apologize. I apologize, mm -hmm. but just a quick question regarding the uh, Sakai presentations on the 15th and yep. um, scheduling for the virtual conference. Mm -hmm. um, given that we've got international participants, do we know what the hours that day are going to be? 
Yeah, we're going to be starting at nine. Um, and we're going to have lightning talks like in the morning and three different rounds, like one in the morning, uh, one kind of midday and then another one in the afternoon. So we're trying to be cognizant of the, the folks in Europe as much as possible. Um, Great. So, yeah, it, but it'll run from like nine to four, I believe. Um, nine to four so, Eastern. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The second day, Wednesday, is going to be a little shorter. It runs, the rotate is from 10 to 12 in the morning, and materia is uh, 1 to 3 in the afternoon um, with a little bit of stuff at lunchtime and a little bit of stuff after. So it's a shorter day, the second day. All right. Um, any other announcements or questions um, before we jump into June? All right, so we'll start off with this first one. This was one that Marty brought up yesterday on the core call, and he was hoping to get some um, teaching and learning uh, input on it. So um, the, the issue is when the send reminder email for 24 hours before the due date is turned on, um, and the assignment type is set to non-electronic reminders don't get sent to students, but all other types do send the reminder. So he was wondering if this was um, a deliberate decision um, or if if it was something else going on. So he um, he's probably one of these two options. The first one is make it so that emails uh, reminders go out with non-electronic submission type as well, or if non-electronic is selected, hide the 24-hour reminder setting. So um, let me see if he, he also put in the comments, in his opinion, that uh, the non-electronic should send email when that setting is enabled. Um, because instructors provide a you know instructions due date etc in that scenario it would act just as if um, the student got a reminder before the due date so it just isn't in sakai so what do the folks on today's call think do you think that this is something that should be sort of exempt from the reminders or should it be something where all of all the different types get the reminder regardless I'm going to say I agree with Marty, and I think it should, if, some, if the instructor checks that option, it should send out the reminder. And if it's not an assignment where it's reasonable to send out that email reminder, then the instructor can just choose not to check that box. I don't know if anyone's seen the movie uh, Catch Me If You Can, but I concur. I think that the faculty member has checked send a reminder 24 hours so it shouldn't matter what the assignment format is okay it looks like jennifer agrees i'm with you yeah <laughs> yep. okay so they should if the instructor chooses to send a reminder it shouldn't matter what the su submission type is um, so number two here the hiding of it is not what we want. We want it to just disregard what the type is and send a reminder no matter what if the instructor has. Yeah, I think it. we're making it too complicated yeah. if we start doing that, but there's already enough checkboxes to do in, a, in, in mm -hmm. an assignment. Yeah, okay. It looks like Charles agrees as well. Okay, great. So that one's unanimous. Um, so let's see. I'll, make I'll, capture, on the, I'll capture on oh, the Jira, Wilma. I'm in it right now. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, oops, I can't type today. Oh, it's Wednesday. No one can. Type. <laughs> All 
going back to the birds of a feather, I'm, I'm, there's too many good things I want to talk about. I want, <laughs> I'm like going back and forth. I think I've moved a number like multiple times. <laughs> Well, feel, feel free to keep changing your mind or add new ones, add new ones if you want. Um, and anybody who came in late, if you um, go to this link here, it's, it's this spreadsheet here where you can vote on topics for the birds of the feather. These are not the only topics that will be covered. Um, there'll be presentations and things and lightning talks. So um, this is just for the discussions, birds of the feather discussions. Um, but yeah, there's lots of good ones. It's hard to choose. Okay, um, so this second one, um, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm guessing somebody on the call today put that one in. I pasted it in. It was one that I saw on triage this week. Okay, do you want to kind of bring us up to speed on it? Um, it's hard because I actually disagree. Um, with Alan's request. I think Andrea put the ticket in, but Alan had uh, updated it. So I thought I would pass this along to other minds and other voices. Alan and Andrea are asking um, to restore the ability to use Postum instead of having to just upload a CSV file being able to select one that the instructor has uploaded to resources. Um, Alan's argument looks like it would make it um, help make it a little easier for the instructors, especially one who's uh, using web dev to manage the CSV file, make for some easier data updates. My concern is all it takes is one instructor forgetting to hide it and you have a FERPA violation Galore. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay, here's a question. How many other tools do we turn around and limit their um, abil ability because a faculty member may make a mistake? Just curious. I don't know a, a faculty member could put a test and quiz answers in their resources and we don't concern ourselves with that. So why would, um, you know, if they're doing a, a, a printable test and they're just doing it as an attachment, they could attach the wrong one. You know, we, I would say it would be kind of nice rather to have a hidden, a default hidden folder in resources at all times so that faculty could put, um, sensitive documents in there, you know, built into the system. Here's your hidden folder. And there you go. It's only visible to the role of instructor. But um, that would be the only, because I, we don't, you know, if they select the wrong document from assignments uh, and, and click on anything that contains data that they've scraped off their own screens, we, we don't limit them. What are your thoughts? That's a good point, Dee Dee. Thank you. I'm kind of torn. I mean, I kind of want to help help them not mess up, but at the same time, you know, it is sort of annoying if you know what you're doing to not have that option. Right. Option. So here's our, that's what I was saying. Well, should we just have I, a default I like the hidden idea folder? Dee Dee had of having like the permanent hidden folder that's created by default in resources, even if we call it, you know instructor resources, instructor eyes only, mm -hmm. confidential files. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, we, I mean, I think that's an actually a better workaround because then we're defining that, yes, you can have, you have the security here by using this file. And if you don't, you know, that's not really on the software, that's on the user. So. Yeah, I was concerned because, you know, when you import from one site to another, Oh, yeah. <laughs> all, all I'm seeing is, you know, suddenly previous semesters, grades and feedback are entirely exposed to this new class. Yeah, that that's where I'm having my fears, but 
if we can implement this with that hidden folder by default that, you know, if it's imported, it's still in a hidden folder, it stays hidden. Yep. And he can oh, add more I content. have a question. It's, it says that 22X allows the instructor to upload a file only. So you can't choose from resources. You can upload one, though. Does mm -hmm. it put it in a different place? Does it put it in that attachments um, folder? You know, the super secret hidden folder where you get like email attachments and stuff? I think oh. so. Yeah, I have no idea where things reside once they're up. So it, it doesn't put it in resources. So it has to put it in a, one of the hidden like attachments or something. Because I'm wondering, it, the ability that's missing here is the ability to select from resources. Mm -hmm. So whatever file they're violating FERPA with, it's already in there. <laughs> um, so they're not uploading it for postal. It's already in the resources somewhere. Um, hopefully it's hidden, but from you know, we don't know because they could upload it. Instead of wanting to upload it each time, um, the instructor wants to be able to use like WebDAV to manage it and update it, keep it synced with one on their computer. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Then I guess uh, if they're syncing it, it wouldn't make it wouldn't make sense to attach a copy because then it wouldn't sync. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I kind of like the super secret folder by default um, option that Didi came up with. <laughs> Next step, try to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So does everybody like that option? Does anybody want to uh, anybody want to um Cast a, a vote against, or everyone likes the hidden by default, only instructor's eyes only folder. Ooh, for your eyes only. There, we've got movie titles. <laughs> we could have like a little, you know, trailer video for the future. <laughs> I, I, I was literally just thinking about for your eyes only. Okay. We know we have to put that in the Jira now. So, Adam, you're going to type it up. <laughs> yeah, Adam, you're in charge of, of putting our uh, our our trailer video ideas into the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I edited the last one. I, I I fear I can't capture all of the discussion on Postum because it's not a feature that we use locally. So, if somebody else wants to modify this Jira, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I'll take a look after. Uh you're done okay so um do we have other jiras that people would like to suggest or should we just kind of go fishing and see what pops i know we had something via email that i I'm, I'm digging through my mail now that we had that had been set up where it's like oh can you guys take a look at this and uh, yeah I'm we not get sure. a lot of those i try to put them in the the etherpad right away so i don't forget yeah. but um, that this etherpad was was recently created. I think I made it yesterday, so. So it might not have it. I'll dig. Um, but meanwhile, what does everybody feel about just going to a Jira Palooza list? I'd say we go to the list. Done. All right. Do you have a filter or something, DD, that you want to paste in there? Or should we just go to the one on the bottom of the teaching and learning page? Well, we'll go to the bottom of the teaching learning page. There should be this filter down here. So this is all the stuff that has um, the teaching and learning label. Um, I'll just go right to the list here so we can sort and stuff. So um, right now it's sorted by component. Does anybody um, have a particular tool they would like to look at? Or you want me to sort by like when it was created to get the more current ones or just kind of eyeball I'd, I'd like list. to see the current ones. All right, let's sort by created. Anybody else voting in on that? 
chiming in? For me. All right. Um, that says for, uh, is, that, is that September 20? Okay, the date was different. Sorry. Yeah. Whoa. Eight months here. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird different. for us. But. As as Americans. Um, yeah. All right, so do we want to just go down the list? Yeah, let's kick up. Let's get this right. list organized. <laughs> I'm in a good, right, I'm so in a good the, mood. The building's not on fire. I'm happy. <laughs> that's good. We're very glad that your building is not on fire, Dee Dee. Yeah, the minute that alarm went off. So for those of you who don't know, I had a house fire about a year and a half ago. And so I'm a little, I'm a little sensitive when an alarm goes off. <laughs> and, I you know, here imagine. I am at work getting ready for the, for the meeting here. And all of a sudden it's like, whop, whop, whop. And I'm like, and the students in the library, I'm in the library, didn't get up. So I know this is being recorded, but they didn't get up and I was very <laughs> concerned. So um, yes, it gave me a panic. So I do apologize for being late to the meeting. No problem. I'm just glad you're safe and that your building is unburnt. <laughs> um, okay, so this one is uh, t tests and quizzes display active assessments above inactive assessments. Currently um, the inactive assessments to display above the active in the chronological order of due dates. Um, to better view what assessments are currently available or upcoming without scrolling, it would be helpful to show the active ones first and then the in inactive. So let's look at the screenshot here. Um, so it looks like it's, yeah, it's putting the inactive ones above. Oh, that's irritating. Yeah. It's mixing it up based on the due date. So the first quiz in this semester is going to be at the top, the bottom one. So as the semester goes on and different ones are active, the order doesn't change right now. Okay. It's based on the open date. If it, what if it's a blank? Well, date? you can you can sort by any of these, right? Right. Is it, is it, is it sticky? No, it's not no. sticky. Okay. It is not sticky in the least. It is quite annoying. So you have to open this the list, so, click on status to sort it by those that are currently active. Yep. And then as soon as you click on something else, the list returns back to the default. Okay. So should the the change be to make it sticky or should the change be to change the default? I think there's another JIRA out there to make the tests and quizzes display sticky because I know I've had issues where I change the view to show like the 50 because I've got a test, a class with a bunch of tests. Mm -hmm. Go into one, change the settings, save it, come back, and I've got to change the view again to be able to get to all of them without going next to next to next. Yeah, you know, it seems like it should be the other way around if it was alphabetical. Although I guess no. Current default is, yeah. is is definitely date, it seems. Yeah. Well yeah. I understand. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, I would agree. I mean that is kind of annoying. I think the sticky part is the one that bothers me more than the, the default inactive at the top because I would want my choice to stick if I have a particular column I like to sort by. If So if it's inactive and it has a different date and earlier date, it also shows up at the top. So let's say it was imported from a previous semester, it's inactive. So that shows first. I believe so. I mean, if date, is it the open date that's the sorting? I think it sorts by due date. By due date. Okay, yeah, this it would have been a better example if the due dates were the same for the inactive and active. Um, but 
So yeah, if it's sorting by due date, then then then, like then the three old or four weeks, imported. yeah, three or four weeks into the semester, all your early quizzes would be inactive, and um, they would still be at the top because mm -hmm. the due date would have been, you know, passed. Passed. Hmm. Yeah, a way of sticking that would be kind of nice. Or but. just having it show like the current ones, you know, like anything current that's first. old would be kind of bumped down. Anything past, you know, would be at the bottom. So should the default sort be reverse chronological by due date? No, because a lot of projects that could be done in a test and quiz could have a due date that is, you know, towards the end of the semester. Yeah. Like you wouldn't want to see the final project at the top of the list the whole term, but you also wouldn't want to see like the week one stuff when you're in week five. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking sure. where it would like kind of yeah. check to see what the current date is and show you anything that's that date or later. Or I think but, is, can we do it twice? Like, could it sort by active and then by open date or due date um, and then inactive by open date or due date? So it would subcategorize them. So it'd be all the active ones at, at, on the top and then the by due date and then all the inactive ones at the bottom by due date. The only challenge I see with this, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here is let's say an essay test or one that has a lot of manually graded questions, when it's active, it's at the top of the list, due date comes, it becomes inactive, how far down does it bounce and how hard is it for that instructor then to find it to be able to go in and grade? They, they could also search for it. Does the search stick? I mean, like if you go from one tab to another, if you go... It, it doesn't stick, but you could search. But I think you have to search each time. Mm -hmm. Each time she, the instructor. Has Each time to you visit the test and quizzes tool, like if you leave the tool mm -hmm. and go back. So every session that they're grading, right, Christina? I like that's one of your thoughts. So, does it does it um, go back to like all of them? If you like click into a quiz and then you go hit the back to list, does yeah? So you'd have to search every time. So I'm a Windows and a Mac jockey, but something that I'm thinking about in Windows is that the Finder, or Finder, listen to me, Explorer has the ability to show items by category, and then you group by file type. What I almost want is a control on this page to show assignments by group. So then I'd have a checkbox to enable me to either sort across uh, category by due date or to show in groups, and then it would be active, inactive, and draft. I kind of like that. Yeah, I like that too. That, <laughs> that, view, that view menu does that, where you can choose to see all drafts. Right. But, it doesn't, can... but it doesn't allow you to show all across category it allows you to filter by category but it doesn't allow you to sort within group by category well the status will let you sort by inactive active or draft so if we click view a selected type and then click status it should saying? at least, yeah, I think it'll at least put them in order. Maybe not the order that you want, but no. it should group all the inactive and active and draft together. That's true. So should the default sort on this view be status? And then people have to click do in order to sort by do or? Yeah, I don't know. I, no, 
no default sort order is going to satisfy everyone. Yeah. That's why I think the sticky thing is more important. Because if you could make your sort sticky, whatever it is that you prefer, you could make that your default. But in any case, that's a different Jira, so sorry. Um, okay, so what he is asking for is, let's see. Yeah, he's not, he doesn't say anything about the ones with the same date. Let's see what, oh, Alan put lots of comments in here. I didn't read these, so. Okay, this is pretty detailed. Do you guys want to just all take a moment to read this or would you like me to read it aloud? I think we should just read it because this is a little, it's hard yeah, to read on, is, the, on the on big blue button and then, you know, you'd be trying to read yeah. it out loud. Yeah, so I'm going to give you guys some quiet time to digest this while I do the same. Um, so. Okay, did everybody make their way through the whole comment? I really kind of like his changing labels because the labels sort alphabetically and cognitively. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, I, I was kind of confused up in here when I was looking at the, the listing, but when I got down to this paragraph with the labeling, that made a lot of sense to me. Well, the issue is that it's a custom sort order that the requester is looking for. Mm -hmm. But cognitively... Although I have to say I prefer template to working copy and schedule to queued. I think those titles work better for me anyway, but... Agreed. Um, but I like the labeling a lot. You can always use the message bundle manager because people in England might want queued. True. Okay, Jennifer's saying she likes the labels. Anybody else? Plus one. Labels from Didi. 
All right, so we like labels. Uh, I think those make a lot more sense. Um, and then they should sort nicely. Um, but I am going to suggest that we like template and schedule better. <laughs> if people in England want to change it, they put the message bundle. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Um, all right, so I'll go back and make a comment on that one. Um, let me just put a oh, did okay. We like labels. So I remember what to put later. Oh, and this one. Oh, wait, you already put it in. Thank you, Dee Dee, maybe whoever put that in. Hello. All right, so. All right, so any other thoughts on that one? I'll go back and comment on it later. So you guys don't have to sit here and watch me type. Should we link view persistence to this ticket because we feel they're related? Yes, that's an excellent point. Christina put that in chat. It's 43007. Is it 43007? Yes. Tests and quizzes view should be persistent. Okay. And I told you I can't, I can't even type so bad that I'll check what persistent pants. A, is that right? It's not spell checking it. it for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> one of those days. It's one of those days, yeah. One of those days. Okay. Um, so I'll go back and add that later. All right, so let's um, take another look at, let's see, where did I have my filter? I can't remember which one I was in. I guess I'll go back to, oh, here. Yeah, this was it, okay. Um, so the next one is about rubrics, and this is about adding a draft mode. Implement the ability to save a provisional rubric as a draft. Be left for later without worrying about selecting it unintentionally on assignments. Um, meant for both regular and weighted. I think that makes a lot of sense. Ton, ton of guys, sense, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't we think of that sooner? <laughs> Who created um, this ticket? Vincent Alfonso. Oh, we thank you, Vincent. And let's see, there's a picture here of what the draft mode might look like. Let's zoom in a little. Okay, so he added a save as draft here. And then what does the draft look like? He had a couple options for it. The save as draft button was one, and then the other one was the icon up in the actions line. Up that that here? Was... Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the icon. I don't know what that is. He might have just grabbed an icon. Is that meant to save, or is that meant to indicate that it's draft? I think it's meant probably to toggle between draft and not draft, like the one next to it toggles between weighted and not weighted. Oh, yeah, I, I really don't like that, but I don't know how others feel about it. It looks like a snowflake. Yeah, I, I, I can see hitting that by accident and not realizing what it's doing. I actually like the icon more than the button because Right now, the weighted rubric is the only one that has a save button at the bottom. Everything else, it just auto saves as you're going along. I don't know if I would get used to it, maybe, but there's no save button. There's yeah, just saved. the save as draft. Yeah, it's so, like I said, I think it's meant to toggle between draft and regular just like you know this one toggles between weighted and standard and shared and not shared what does it look like when it's not... he didn't come up with a sample just the he was showing giving examples of where he could see that uh 
save yeah. as draft, make it a draft button going. I mean, if it's a toggle, then it needs to have a different state, like the pan sign turns into a percent when it's weighted. Um, so I'd, I'd want to see what the, the regular non-draft icon is to be able to differentiate between the two. But um, this seems like, I mean, I like the idea of a draft. I think that makes a ton of sense. I think the placement of the save option and the appearance of the save option should go to the UX group for more discussion. What do you guys think? I'll chime in. I agree. Um, the I think the UX group are people who are more using lots of um, icons and have spent more time seeing how things how icons are used might be a, a better group to decide which should be there. But I think the um, the idea of having a draft is very very cool. Yeah. Okay. So I will um, I'll put a comment on there that we we love the draft idea. Um, we think it needs a UX label to decide how the save as draft will be implemented. Oh, thank you. Whoever's typing for me, much appreciated. No worries. <laughs> All right, um, move on to the next one. Uh, feature requests for the sites menu. Option for students to see unpublished sites. Um, all right, so at the start of a semester, it's common for schools to say, where's my site? I don't see my site because um, they're not published. Uh, all right, so, and this one's from Alan. So he's wanting a property or configuration option to display or not on published course or project sites. So this would still be something that you could leave the way it currently works in your instance. You wouldn't have to use it because a lot of institutions publish automatically. So unless faculty are controlling the publishing, this doesn't make a lot of sense. But if they are, then it does. Um, Let's see, he wasn't sure which covers the sites menu in the main navigation. He listed portal. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it would be portal. It could also be like site info, maybe, or. Well, I can only speak to our institution. So we have the faculty publish their own sites. Um, once they are sure they want to unlock the door and let the students in. Um, mm -hmm. how, um, so the proposal here is to allow the students to see it. Um, we allow our help desk to see the, uh, the status of the published and unpublished sites. Um, we, you know, we drop the tool in there so that they can tell the, uh, tell the student, no, the site's not published yet. So I think he's, Alan is speaking about this, a similar case here. Um, mm -hmm. but students would know that that course has been created or at least that course shell has been created and it's just unavailable to them at this moment right i think yeah that i has don't a think he's on it yeah i because think we um, get a million he, he's not suggesting that they be given access to the course right they, they see it and it just says unpublished. its existence is in place but maybe some sort of um, color or fading or icon would let them know that this is unavailable to you at the moment so we actually i put in chat, we have a similar feature already turned up in our instance, but it's not in the site menu. It's in site setup or a uh, worksite setup, sorry, mm -hmm. um, old nomenclature. So uh, we added worksite setup to registered users profiles. Um, and uh, 
that automatically filters based on active term within academic term manager and unpublished sites appear as the textual title of the site but it's not a clickable link because students don't have the ability to visit an unpublished site so we rebranded worksite setup as my courses within that site for students' profiles, and we tell them to go to my courses in order to see their enrollments. In that way, it doesn't clutter up the site's menu, but they still have a way to see their enrollment in unpublished sites. That's a nice solution, Adam. Yeah, I'm quite impressed. I'll and Jennifer says Jennifer says she has something. Is yours like Adams, Jennifer, or is it different? Um, it might be. I came back in so I could talk because I had on listen only. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, ours is if they click on the sites or the little waffle square menu, they get all their classes. But if they're not published, they're actually gray. If they're published. They're black, and they're they can click on it and open it. Um, and that's a customization we have, so I don't know if it's been pub pushed anywhere else. Um, but that way I can tell students if that is like that, then that means your instructor hasn't published it. You need to contact them if you can't see it. And that's helped a lot with our help desk calls. Yeah, that sounds different from Adam's. Adam, yep. would you capture yours on the JIRA as a Actually possible? Actually, Jennifer, I think we may have stolen the enhancement from Walsh, and this may <laughs> date back to when um, we were an RSmart customer before long uh, before transitioning to Longsight. Um, okay. unfor unfortunately, I do not remember the name of the specific property, but I'll search my Longsight tickets to find out whether or not I can find that property or I'll file a ticket in order to get that. Once I have the property information, I will capture that for um, Alan's benefit in the feature request. Okay, great. That'd be awesome. I think that yeah, will probably we use satisfy. That the... Go ahead. Oh, that's okay. I would say we, I didn't realize it was a customization until like two upgrades ago when it stopped working. Um, so, because the person who was here before must have known that and they always tested for it. But, um, but it has helped a lot. So, that, I think you're right, Adam. I think you might have used the same code. Well, it hasn't broken for us. And I do think it was contributed back to um, uh, Trunk because um, Roger Williams was interested in the same implementation. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people would be interested in it. So if it's not already contributed back, I, I would be surprised. Um, but we could certainly see about getting it into core if it's not already there. I consider that an easy win. Does anyone else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Old stuff that still works and cannot be broken. Yay! <laughs> um, cool. So, it, Adam, once it when, once you track that down, if you could update the comments, that would be awesome. Will do. All right. Uh, okay. So, I still have that one open from before. All right, um, it's it's 1057. I don't know if we have enough time to do another one. So I think we'll call it on that one, um, especially since it was an easy win so we could feel good about it. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for, uh, for attending today and for participating. Um, just in our last couple of minutes, I'm gonna take a quick look at our upcoming meetings. So um, October is wide open. If anyone has any suggestions for topics or speakers that they would like to see, if there's something that you would like to present or something that you would like to see, if we can recruit someone to come and talk about, please let me or Didi know. Um, we won't be meeting on the 16th because um, of November, that is because of the uh, Sakai uh, virtual conference is happening that day. Um, and then we've got two more dates in December. Um, 
And I don't know, and we don't have to decide right this moment, but I don't know if we want to meet on the 21st. I'm not sure if a lot of folks will already be gone um, heading off on holiday by then. Um, so we can decide if, if we need to hold that last meeting in December or not. Um, but we've got one, two, three, four, possibly five open dates for topics. Um, and while Jiraplooza is always fun, it's nice to kind of mix it up a little bit with other stuff. So I had a suggestion um, mm -hmm. that one of the recent, I think it might have been SakaiCon, um, Dayton talked a lot about their CSS changes. And I wondered if that would be of interest to folks on how they're using um, CSS to do some things in lessons. I'm sure people would be interested because people always ask about it. Remember who talked though that we could contact. But. I could reach out to um, to David or Julianne at Dayton and see if they'd be interested in talking about CSS. We may also be talking about CSS at the virtual conference in November. That's one of our off topics potentially. Because we use it a little, but I'd love to see how other people use it. So. Mm -hmm samples of it would be great for the for the conference <clears throat> but at least to get a little taste of it here mm -hmm. would be wonderful and also while you're typing that is anyone going to edge cause in october all right then thank you <laughs> i'm not going i, I think josh is um, dd are you going i am Maybe you can come and tell us what you learned when you get back. Uh, I can certainly, that will be the November 2nd one, I guess. Yeah. I okay. maybe um, at the University of Michigan Sakai Con, Dr. Chuck mentioned the possibility of dragging me along. Well, that would be great if you guys could come back and tell us, you know, any key things that you picked up at the conference, anything that themes um, sure yeah that would be great so that will be on um, dd and maybe christina sounds wonderful so that's tentative you're not locked in but uh, hopefully you'll have stuff to say and maybe josh too because i think he's going for sure so i'm sure he's going yeah so if he could make it that day all right, those are some good topics. All right, well, it is now um, officially the top of the hour, so I will let you guys get on about your day. Um, but thanks again for joining us, and hopefully we will see you next on October 5th, and I'll, I'll try to get somebody from Dayton between now and then to talk a little bit about CSS. All right, take care. Have a great day. Thanks, thanks all. Bye. Thanks.